In this video, we'll be answering the question about why or how reservoirs fill up. We'll also be looking at once a reservoir is full, why can it take so long for it to empty? In a previous video that I did, I dealt with the methods of reservoir operations. And actually the answer to the question I just posed lies within these methods. Method A reservoirs are a very common uh, type of reservoir. And if you're operating a reservoir according to method A principles, then it means that you're looking downstream to make the determination on how much to release from the dam. And since method A reservoirs are very common, it's not uncommon to have these reservoirs fill and take a long time to empty. So we'll go and take a look at some of the different principles that we're discussing here and also look at the data to show why it is that reservoirs fill and why it can take so long for them to empty. So what we're looking at here is this is a spillway gate. And the spillway gate's in the closed position. We can tell it's in the closed position because the bottom lip is resting on the spillway. And what we're looking at here is the reservoir pool elevation on the upstream side. And what we want to know is why is it that these reservoirs can fill? Right? Why is this reservoir becoming more full? And also, what happens once we become so full that we have to open up the spillway gates? For the purposes of this video, we're going to think of a top of, of a flood pool, or we're going to think of a full reservoir as being one that will reach the top of the spillway gates in the closed position, and then eventually it will have to be open. So you can see we gain more storage as we open that spillway gate, but also we're increasing the release because the water is now traveling underneath, or it's flowing out of the reservoir underneath that open spillway gate. So to look at this, we're going to be dealing with the White River system. And the White River system is in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. And on the main stem, we have Beaver, Table Rock, and Bull Shoals Lake. The lake we're going to be looking at is Norfolk Lake. And Norfolk Lake is on a tributary to the White River, and it's called the North Fork of the White River. You can see also that there's a very large tributary that flows into the White River. This is called the Black River. And I point that out because I want to zoom in on that area. And so this is the Black River. And then this is the White River. And one thing I do want to point out is that this is Newport. And if you recall, we talked about Method A reservoirs looking downstream to make the determination on what can be released. And Newport is the regulating stage or the point of interest that we look at to make the determination on what can be released from North Fork and Bull Shoals Lake since both of them contribute flow to the White River at Newport. Just to give you a little bit more uh, perspective on the White River, again this is the White River. It flows uh, through the northern Arkansas and a little bit into southern Missouri. This is the confluence with the Black River, and which means that Newport would be somewhere right about here. And you can see that at the Newport, the White River flows both southward and, and eastward. And eventually it drains into the Mississippi River. So the White River is a tributary to the Mississippi River. One other thing to notice is that the White River ent enters the Mississippi River very close to where the Arkansas River enters the Mississippi River which also means that the Arkansas River is a tributary to the, White River, to the Mississippi River. So we're going to be looking at what happened at North Fork during the 2011 event. I have a couple of pools defined here, and you might hear them called pools or zones. And so we have a conservation zone, and that's where water is set aside for conservation purposes. At North Fork, the majority of the conservation pool is set aside for hydropower, but there is some set aside for both water supply and for water quality purposes. You can see the top of conservation pool given by this orange line, and you can see that it varies throughout the year, which means that it's a seasonal pool. Above the conservation pool, you have the flood pool, and that's for the temporary storage of floodwaters. The red line marks the top of the flood control pool, which at North Fork corresponds to the top of the spillway gate when it's in its closed position. 
So we're going to look at the pool elevation that occurred during the 2011 event. And you can see that we start out in the conservation pool and then we get a very rapid rise that occurs in the late April time frame. The pool stays high for about a month and then continues to empty and it finally empties towards the late part of September, early part of October. So a couple of things that I want to look at um, in a little bit more detail is one that we get to the top of conservation pool. You can think of that as at that point having an empty flood pool. Um, and we get there roughly in the middle of April, but then we get completely full towards the end of April. So it basically took 14 days to go from an empty flood pool to a full flood pool. So 14 days to fill, but now we can see it takes one, two, three, four, almost four and a half to five months to empty. So two weeks to fill, four and a half months to empty uh, during the 2011 event. Not all events are going to be that way, but in this 2011 event is going to serve as a good example of why reservoirs get full and why they can take so long to empty. So now we're going to take a look, same plot up top, pool elevation, but we're going to look at why this pool filled. And I think it's pretty obvious to most people that it fills due to precipitation, but I think it can be helpful to look at those two together. So we would expect to see quite a bit of precipitation that's causing that rise. And you just saw it pop up in the late part of April. That That is the case. You got a very significant rainfall event that occurred. In fact, you're looking at daily average precipitation, and this is for basin average above North Fork Dam. And one thing I found interesting is that you have three days here where the daily average precipitation exceeded three inches. You had rainfall both before and after. And you can see when you get significant amounts of rainfall, you can see that towards the maybe mid to late part of May, it caused another rise in the North Fork pool elevation. You can see also you get some rainfall that's occurring even during the period where we're trying to empty North Fork pool. Now we're going to look at the inflow and outflow during this time period and your inflow is given in blue and your outflow is given in red. So since we got a significant amount of precipitation that occurred in the later part of April, you would expect to see a significant amount of inflow and you do. And obviously your inflow is going to be what's driving the pool elevation rise at Norfolk. One thing to also notice is that, again, the red is the release, and we were able to capture a significant portion of the inflow that occurred in late April. But once the pool gets full, or very close to full, these subsequent rises in inflow are going to cause subsequent rises in release because we're at the top of the flood pool meaning that if we were to leave those gates closed, we're going to be overtopping a closed spillway gate, and we don't want to do that. I go into the methods for releasing uh, water through, the, res uh, through the, the spillway gates, or what determines the spillway gate openings in another video. But I think for the purposes of this video, I just want to um, say that we're going to be opening because we don't want them to be overtopped. And I think that that's sufficient to help most people understand why it is that reservoirs operated the way that they are and why it is that they do fail. So you can see here that we are high in the flood pool and we get this inflow that comes in and you get a resulting uh, increase in the outflow. Here you can also see that during the emptying period that your outflow is consistently higher than your inflow, which is what you would expect. If your pool's dropping, it means that your outflow has to exceed your inflow. One other thing that I found interesting in here is that even though we did get some rainfall that occurred during this emptying period, I'm not seeing very significant rises in inflow. 
And part of the reason for that is because of the time of the year. As we get further into summer, you get more vegetation that's occurring uh, or that, that's growing. And also it tends to become relatively dry. So more of that rainfall is being soaked up by the vegetation or it's being infiltrated into the ground. So we're not seeing that that the same amount of runoff that's occurring from these rainfall events. Now what we want to do is take a look at the North Fork pool elevation and inflow and outflow, which you just looked at, but then also since, again, this is a method A reservoir and we're looking downstream, we want to look at what was going on at Newport during this time. And what I'm showing here is the by the orange line, this is, you can think of this as being the base regulating stage. So this is the stage that we want to try to hold. And if we're above this, our releases are going to be limited unless we get to the top of the flood pool and it requires a larger release. Now we do have some allowances to where we can go to a higher regulating stage based on conditions in the system. Um, I won't go into all of those conditions, but one of the main drivers of going to a higher regulating stage is basically how full the lakes are. So if we have very full lakes, then we can typically go to a higher stage at Newport. So now we'll look at what's going on at Newport. You see we're below regulating stage. And then all of a sudden with this rainfall that occurred, we jumped up above the regulating stage at Newport in the late April timeframe, which means that I don't show the rainfall that's occurring in the uncontrolled areas of below um, Bull Shoals and North Fork Dams. But the fact that Newport jumped up tells me that we did get some rainfall that occurred in the uncontrolled areas, which is not uncommon for, um, for there to be widespread rainfall in the, the White River Basin. So one thing to notice is that as we're above this uh, stage, the regulating stage at Newport, it appears that we stay above that until um, about mid-June. And you can see that the higher releases that are occurring during that time are during the periods when we're very close to uh, above the top of the flood pool. You can also see that in the mid-June to early July time frame, that it looks like we're holding 14 feet. So again, we're high enough in the lakes to where we can use that higher regulating stage. You can also see that the releases are higher than the um, inflow during that time. That's why we are getting a pool elevation that drops. And it looks as though that um, we then drop down to the 12 foot regulating stage. So conditions probably told us that we have to get down to a 12 foot regulating stage sometime in the mid July timeframe. And then we hold 12 feet for the remainder of the time that we're emptying Norfolk. And one other thing to point out is that the Norfolk pool elevation that, that we get empty at Norfolk roughly in um, the mid to uh, to late time frame, uh, mid to late uh, September. And then after that, you see this drop at Newport stage, um, which means that we're not having to release as much at Norfolk, we're not emptying the flood pools. It means that we're sending less down to Newport. Now there's other factors that we'd have to look at on what caused that uh, drop in Newport. It can also mean that we don't have a lot of flow coming from the uncontrolled areas. And it can also mean um, that Bull Shoals was also empty. So there's other factors other than just Newport that can contribute to that reduction. But you can see that um, that there was some impact to Newport stage based on not having those required flood releases that were occurring at, um, at Norfolk. So one other thing to point out is that a, a higher regulating stage at Newport would have meant that this would have had a steeper slope to it and would have emptied that sooner. So again, that's one of the reasons why it can take so long. It just depends on how restrictive the downstream regulating stage is. So hopefully this helped you understand better about why it is that reservoirs fill um, and also why it can take a long time for a full reservoir to empty. If you found the video helpful, feel free to subscribe to the channel and you'll get notification when more of these videos come out. And thanks for watching this one.